Welcome back to the channel on our Camp Bedrock 2.0 build. On this week's video, we are going to tackle the interior storage area now that our back seats are out. So let's get going. Now we are ready to start building up our storage ideas. What we're thinking is we're gonna put a board in here. It's gonna be a little taller and it'll have like pull out drawer covers so that we can access the cubbies where we're planning to put the tools and everything that we used to have tucked up underneath the tonneau in the truck bed. So let's see how that works out. A few hours later. Okay, well, uh, quick update. We're going to be wrapping up here. It's 11.15. Uh, it's, it's New Year's Eve uh, when we're working on this here today. And we're, we're tuckered and we want to get showered and cleaned up and watch the ball drop, enjoy a bourbon, and uh, wrap up our evening. I apologize for not having more updates live action, but this is a winging it thing. We don't really know what we're doing. It's tough to put a camera in place or even do a time lapse when we don't know what the heck we're doing. I mean, we're kind of going on the fly. To that, um, what I did is I made these metal brackets. I welded up these brackets here that basically holds the wood, the side, and the front panel uh, board here, and it bolts directly to the seat uh, to the seat bolt holes. So I think that's going to work really well. It's very very robust. Uh, and then we've got this board that kind of goes along the back. It's still loose, but that will hold up uh, the back section of the board as well. Uh, things to make. Uh, I'm going to add a support off of this bolt hole in the front, to, and that will not only add some additional support and hold it down, but um, not, I think it doesn't really need much more holding down. But anyway, uh, it will help help me with being able to push this out and kind of take a little of the hinkus out of this uh, plywood's got a little bend to it. Uh, and I'm also going to make a bracket in the back just because, well, it's not that hard and I'm here. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, we had mentioned, or Alana had mentioned, that we were originally thinking about some drawer guides or something to sort of open a, a compartment where we could drop things straight into the top. The reason we were thinking that is the, the floor here slopes down and we were worried about you know, being able to maximize the space, uh, but that was going to make this really a very complicated build. And Alana had the idea yesterday, uh, actually while we were building here this evening, uh, I think you actually had it yesterday, but I didn't understand what, what you were saying. Uh, anyway, we're just going to make like an RV trap door, like this is, we're just going to cut a hole here and have a little piano hinge or a hinge and it'll drop down. In fact, um, Alana's already ordered the little push lock click button uh, latches for it. So when those get here, we'll be able to finish that up. Um, so when, when we take this back out, we'll cut the holes and everything. So anyway, um, we're going to go in and take a shower and go to bed. And tomorrow we're going to pick back up with uh, making this front bracket, making the rear bracket, locking everything, marking all the holes and everything, and then taking this back out for a paint and finish. All right, well, fast forward a few hours, and it is partially secured, and we are doing a sort of a final test before we take it back out to paint and do the, uh, do the outside work. Ended up just using a piece of uh, angle iron here. Um, we're gonna secure that, that bolt for the back piece in, in final assembly. Uh, it's, it's very robust. That's holding the front real well. We even threw the, uh, the fridge and the other shelf that we had in there back in to test fit, make sure that it was gonna work. So here is the full box storage size. So there's the uh, little back seat. And now it's time to cut accesses in, which uh, you may laugh at, but we have changed our mind yet again on how we're gonna access this space. And I think we're back to a, just a regular old flip top, uh, flip lid right on the top. So we went ahead and made everything up here. Uh, we've got the back matching the liner real well. This is actually, we, we have to leave some sort of vent here in the back uh, because the when you close the doors, the little flaps to let the vehicle breathe so the doors will close are in there. So we're thinking about making some sort of, I don't know, screen or something so it doesn't look so open and gaudy, but yeah, uh, now it's finally time to take it apart and hopefully I don't screw this thing up when I start cutting the access in.
Well, here we go. Uh, we've got all the pieces now painted this evening. We did a prime coat um, earlier today and then two coats of paint. And uh, we're gonna leave the, the pellet stove over here cranking tonight. We're gonna move some air across it. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be ready for install. I've got the, um, the aluminum doors uh, here that will go into those two holes to access the storage. So yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully be ready to install in the morning. painted, bolted back in, and uh, ready to receive the top. So we've got to uh, get the hinges and the doors mounted, and then that's next. Okay, here it is, 90%. Uh, uh, now installed. The lid is on and we have that shelf back in there. Now we've removed the metal actually. We scavenged that metal which became the doors uh, for the top of the storage box. We wanted to redo this anyway. We needed to do a little bit of something different for the fridge that needs to be just a little bit wider anyway. And that other side used to have like a hinge open up thing. We just want a solid platform there. We never used it and all it did was rattle. So there you go. Uh, we do still have to secure the top down. I think that's going to go just fine. So there you go. A little storage bin. Pop that up. Uh, gobs and gobs of room down in here. This is actually the smaller of the boxes because we've got that bracket, um, that bracket on in there. And then over there is the, the other box, which you can reach up into. Of course, it's a little bit shallower, so we could uh, so it would open behind the shelf. So we, uh, we did put some foam here uh, to keep the rattles down. Boom, there we go, secure the top and uh, this project's done. All right, box is completely done. We have secured the top and we did that just with some wood screws that went basically around the perimeter into those other boards. Alana and I aren't really woodworkers and this was our best path. We have not yet decided if we're gonna trim it out with some aluminum to cover up those screw heads and also add uh, a little more strength or a little bit of you know protection from the edge of the wood with that aluminum in the future or not, we'll see. We know that we definitely need to let the paint set up a little bit. We found the spray paint that matches our interior red color really pretty well, but it's less than eight hours old, so it's really very soft. In fact, putting the screws in, we've got a few spots that we need to touch up a little bit. Because it's spray paint, I'm hoping that that enamel will harden over time and be able to take uh, some of the bags and things that will be sitting on top of it. Now, speak of that, some of you may be wondering, hey, Jay and Alana, how come you haven't touched any of the back of the truck? Why do you have this here? Well, as luck would have it, these hangers, these metal hangers, are what the, the seat backs actually sit onto, and then they bolt from the bottom. And that means these are really robust. But for us, we're actually going to put our hiking bags and those kind of things right back there. So they'll just set in here, and we'll be able to clip them right to these back supports along the back. It's perfect. We didn't really have to do anything. That being said, we may actually build a column up here for some other storage later behind the fridge. We're not sure, but we've got plenty of real estate here in the wood to attach to uh, if we decide to do that. The last thing I'm going to do for this interior piece is actually a touch of electrical. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing, but I'm not actually going to do it in this video. This little box used to sit underneath the seats here, and what it did was it was connected directly to the truck battery to run our ARB fridge freezer. Now, the way most fridge freezers work for off-road use is, by default, they will take 120 volts AC when present. When not present, they will switch directly to 12 volts. It's been really handy for us because when we had the Jackery in the back of the truck, we would actually plug it into the AC, use the inverter in that, and it would automatically switch off of the truck battery and run off of the Jackery. The thing is, that inverter, that conversion from AC to DC, 
uh, it's really inefficient. It causes us to use a lot more power on the Jackery than if we had just been running it on the 12 volts alone. So we want to bring this back where we can run from the truck battery uh, especially when we're just doing a long run down the road, I don't necessarily want to be using electric from the back of the truck. But when we're grounded, we don't have shore power, we don't have AC of any kind, I do want to run off of those batteries and not my truck battery. So we actually brought in a second 12 volt source that will come to this box so we can run the fridge that's going to sit inside the truck on the 12 volt DC. Now this on off switch that I had in this box it needs to go to a three-way switch. So I can select truck battery or I can select the batteries from the back. Then everything else, the uh, fridge freezer hookup as well as I have two USB ports here and in the middle there's actually a little, uh, a little meter that tells me the voltage rating. Everything else will work the same. I believe this little dude is gonna sit right there uh, we're going to make a mount for that. We're going to get that installed here pretty quick. Now the other thing you observant viewers may have noticed, we've got this AC cord in here and I mentioned we're moving away from running the fridge on AC. Well, remember we've added connections or added things on the electrical system that are going to give us shore charging capability. And I even have a three-way switch that will allow me to disconnect from my inverter that will be on our electrical system to just run everything from that 120 volts shore power. When we do that, I have a wire that's actually come back into the truck and it's that is here so we can connect the fridge to the AC. That way when AC is present because we're at a campground or at some place that has a shore power connection, boom, the fridge will automatically switch over to that and not be loading either the truck or the battery system in the bed of the truck, uh, whichever one we happen to be running on at that time. All the actual electrical connections and how that works, that's gonna be in the next video as we get ready to go back into that electrical system. For now, we're calling this interior conversion done with the exception of getting that tray back in here that we talked about. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed our, uh, our tit for tat, our, our changes along the way and uh, where this went uh, with the storage. We're gonna get back to the electrical system next. Like, subscribe, do all those kind of things, and we will see you next week or very soon. Bye-bye.